All right, guys, this is Ross. Um, wanted to do one last little fig review for you guys before the season just officially ends. I mean, we're really, uh, what, what is today, like October 20th or something? It's the 19th. So we're getting very, very close to frost. And the fact that I'm even able to get um, a high quality fruit by this date is kind of really special. Um, obviously it's not impossible. It has happened in the past. Uh, it probably will consistently happen actually in the future, but um, this isn't something that happens all the time, guys. And I figured because it has been a little dry here, it's probably a good time to review this particular fig, um, which is called Paradiso. And I've talked about this fig uh, a couple times, uh, but I don't think I've done a its own exclusive, I've never done its own exclusive video before, but this is the Paradiso from Ciro in Italy. And uh, you know, the, there's many different Paradisos out there we talked about in the past. There's one that I grow called uh, Paradiso from Bode, which is a incredible, incredibly tasting fig. This one's also really, really good. And it's also, I think, rather early. I find that it's more um, of a flat shape, and I do find that this is very similar to what you would really find, um, let's say, in Italy as really the standard of Paradisos. You know, um, there's, like I said, there's many different figs that are named Paradiso, but people just name their fig Paradiso without really knowing, is it Paradiso, you know? Uh, there's one that originally was depicted in Galicio's drawings, and that, I guess, is really the true Paradiso. Is this really the true Paradiso? I don't know about that, but I do know that this seems to really match up super well to the Paradiso that Paolo uh, Bologna grows in Italy. And... If he has a fig called Paradiso, I would be more inclined to think that that is the original Paradiso um, than not. Um, and it's this is a different Paradiso than any of their other Paradisos I've grown, um, especially in the fact that this is a quite an early variety. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it you know as early as Ron de Bordeaux, but it's probably slightly after Hardy Chicago, maybe uh, two to three weeks after Rondé Bordeaux. Um, maybe that's approaching mid-season at that point. Um, I don't necessarily have a great idea, but today is, a, as I said, today's the 19th of October and the crop is basically finished. There's two figs left. Um, and also this thing, it didn't start at the earliest date as I would have hoped, but really almost none of my figs did this year because we didn't do much pinching. So if I did the pinching, I imagine this would have been a lot earlier. Plus I figured, because we grafted this um, and then I air layered it um, off of another tree I had, I wanted to get this tree established because frequently when you air layer such a big tree, and it doesn't, if it doesn't have a big root system to it, it can really suffer the following year. It happened with my Smith that we, we air layered off of uh, the brown turkey rootstock that we had. Um, it's just happened many times in the past. So I figured this tree, let's just let it grow. And if it fruits, it's kind of a bonus at this point. But it fruited. I put out a lot of figs actually, almost a fig at every node. I find that it's actually quite productive. Um, <clears throat> and again, I think it's actually relatively early and it's also one of the best tasting figs I have. Let me put this plate down and zoom in here. It's just, it really does look beautiful. Um, <clears throat> and it's really quite something. I'm not, I'm not going to kid with you guys. This is one of the best tasting figs I have. It's, and for this date, uh, I would argue this is almost as good as the Col de Doms. Um, I would rank this up here with the Col de Doms. And so far, 
The Colded Arm replacement I have found is De La Roca. Go back, you can see the video we did on De La Roca. That's a really special fig. Um, but this one seems to be like of one of the earliest cold denoms I have come across. You know, we're always, I'm always trying to find a replacement for that fig because it's so amazing, but it's so late. And yeah, it doesn't split. Um, it does perform reasonably well here if you can get it to ripen at an early date. Um, but this one would technically, I guess, blow that one out of the water if it ripens as early as I think it does. And uh, the only issue with this, there's really one issue, guys, and I hate to say it, but it splits. It has a reasonably, uh, you know, a medium-sized eye, I would say. So the eye is slightly big and it, and it splits and it has just really not the right shape. The cold knobs are so amazing because they have that pyriform shape, the teardrop shape, whereas this fig here is really quite flat. Usually is more of a flat, uh, your salado type shape, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Your ciolado, I think maybe is a better pronunciation. I don't know, but uh, the point is because it doesn't have that right shape, it will split and it will just have problems with rain here in this climate. And inevitably, I probably should get rid of this tree. Um, so what I think might end up working out, and it, the only way I think I should grow this tree in the future, is if I actually air layer something off of here or I take a cutting and root it and then plant that in the ground. And by planting that in the ground, it may, because it's in the ground and the, the soil moisture is more consistent, I will see less splitting. I probably will see less problems with this in this particular climate. However, is it still worth it at that point compared to something else? I don't know just yet. And maybe I'm just, you know, because of its other characteristics, I'm just being too hopeful at this point and being unrealistic. But here's where I think this one will shine is if you guys are in like, let's say the Pacific Northwest, obviously a, a place like West Texas, Arizona, California, you live in a dry place, let's just say, um, this should do really well for you. And it should ripen within a reasonable amount of time for most of you. So that's, that's a really good sign. Um, it's a really good sign. And it really opens up at least allowing people, more people to grow this fig and more people should grow this fig. And um, yeah, so hopefully at some point here in the future, we can get one of these in the grounds. Maybe we can get enough cuttings to then send out the people and then spread this variety around. I really do think it's uh, really quite amazing. Let's try it. Yeah, like the beauty of this fig, guys, is in the thickness. It's just a very thick and dense fig, almost to the extent, pretty darn close to the Colden Am. And it's got a good berry flavor to it. Um, easily one of the best tasting figs I have. Complex, I like the skin. It's got a decent figginess to it thick and chewy and um, sticky, um, maybe even gooey a little bit, you know, good sweetness. So I don't really know what else to say about it, guys. Um, clearly, you're just going to have to grow it yourself and uh, find out, you know. So there's my recommendation, I think. I might even just say, you know, I might even just say screw it and actually just plant the whole tree, even if it's grafted. It, you know, even be even if it is grafted, I might just plant that in the ground next year, sometime this this next spring, maybe even in the next couple weeks, and then um, you know, from there we'll get enough cuttings to send it out to people, and um, I can probably move on from this variety, or maybe uh, I'll be convinced to keep it. So. All right, guys, hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see you for the next one.
probably the last tasting of the year. See you guys uh, for other videos, all right? Take care.